Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Minecraft server in a headless Linux environment. Environment. <laughs> so, the easiest way would just to be to create a folder using an SMB share, FTP, or something, or even use something like WinSCP to create an SSH thing, and then log into it, and it's great. And then you get a file explorer which is running over SSH, and I love it. But I'm going to show you how to do it using something like Putty. Um, of course you could do this on whatever, but today I'm going to show you how to do it on here. So, first connect to your server if you're using, or computer, if you, just get into the command line, so sign in. And then what we need to do is we need to either create a folder or go to a folder. So I already have the folder created. Um, you can create one accordingly. So, cd, um, what is it, shared folders, um, and then it is testing. So now, if we ls in here, we can see there's nothing in here. So now what we need to do is in a browser, we need to head over to minecraft.net slash download. And we don't want to do this one, we got to run down here and click on download the Minecraft server, Java edition. If you know how to do Bedrock, you get Bedrock, I guess. I don't. Um, and then Java edition, we right click here and click copy link address. And then we type wget and then we paste that in. And then it downloads the server. And now we're going to type nano uh, run.sh and we're going to create a file uh, which is like it's like a batch file in Windows if you don't know what it is okay so sorry I just have to check and write the stuff down to make sure I'm not lying to you so we're going to type Java minus X MS then 1024 M spacebar minus or dash or hyphen XMS no X, XMS and then in my case I'm going to use 3 gigs of RAM so 3072 the way you get the megabytes for the amount of RAM you want is you multiply 1024 times however many gigabytes of RAM you want to use so 1024 times 3 is 3072 8 gigs would be 8192 and 16 would be 16,384. No, that's not right. It's close. <laughs> and then M, capital. Then we type dash jar. And if we control X really quick. Now, if we press LS, type in LS here, we can see there is a server.jar and the file that we just created. So it may be different if you're using like. Um, spigot or bucket or whatever and yeah keep that in mind so then we're going to type server no I'm bad at this how am I so bad server oops dot sh and then dash o true then control x y and enter now this part is important you do period or dot and then slash run dot sh oops I messed that one up haha -ha. make sure you do server dot jar not sh like me because you'll look like an idiot like I just did and then run that command again and if we've done it right and we have because um, you know I do have this running on my own server. So now, this is my server, but now we have this EULA file here, which if we type ls, we can see EULA.txt. So what we need to do is we need to type nano, right, and then type in an E and press tab, and it should autocomplete to EULA. Then we need to change this EULA equals false to true which is basic Minecraft server stuff, so if you're watching this and you don't know how to run a Minecraft server yet, you should probably figure out that first, but then we run it again and it'll generate all the files like magic. Probably. 
and it's great. Actually, let me show you this Win SCP thing, because if you've never used it, it's great. It's It runs off of Putty, I think. And I love it. So I'm already in my shared folders directory, but you can see here I'm accessing all of this through SSH, which is just so useful if you can't set up a, a SMB or whatever, or FTP. This is really useful. I'm not sure if you can edit stuff in here, can you? No. Oh, I guess, okay, I guess WinSCP does have a thing. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. WinSCP is a super useful tool for anyone that does a lot of SSH file stuff. And it really does just save a lot of time. So, I do recommend learning the uh, command line stuff, but WinSCP really helps save a lot of time. Then, the server's up, we could connect to it, and it's great. So, yeah, if you had to edit any of the files, it's just nano and then server oh yeah we're still control C you usually want to type stop but it's it's shutting down you go nano and then like server dot properties and you have it'll auto complete as much as it can as you can see we have a server dot properties and a server dot jar so yeah press enter and now you can edit this file much as you'd like. So, yeah, there's that. Control X. Boom. And it's quite simple. Um, there are probably better tutorials out there that go more in depth, but this is a really all you need to know to get up and running. Um, for plugins, I would really just recommend A, you have to have spigot and bucket, or and or bucket. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to recommend a uh, graphical thing for that. Yeah, thanks for watching this video. I will see you all next time. Goodbye.